do it. Uh, hey, everybody, and I'm going to bring you down here, and I'm going to introduce you to uh, a person who whose name I've seen a lot in my work, uh, but never really formally met, and that's this man, or if I can, yeah, Hill Carroll. Hill, how are you doing? Out the stay. Um, City, I'm doing great. Outstanding. I'm excited about being on the call with you today. I'm excited for, to, for having you, and the, this is outstanding, and the folks, uh, for watching, you, you know the drill when you come in here, because uh, I know people are just getting the notification, but uh, I'm going to let everybody catch up. I'm just going to make sure that the uh, pop-up is set so that I can see your questions as you come in, and it is, and there's Hill, and everything is perfectly aligned like that, and we'll have right at it. Hey, Phil, first, Hill, first of all, tell my viewers uh, about what you do in your background. Yeah, I'm uh, the head of a, a small company called Sports and Properties, Inc. We're based in North Carolina. Our office is in Cary, North Carolina, which is part of the Raleigh-Durham market. Uh, we're actually right near the Raleigh-Durham airport. And uh, we've uh, been working for many years uh, in what I call a combination of things that are sports tourism related, uh, sports sponsorships, uh, and event management. So uh, it's kind of a neat combination that all kind of intertwines uh, because our work on facilities and sponsorships and rights all relate to staging events in those same facilities. Every event seems to need sponsorships as part of it. And um, so that's the area we've concentrated in. And we do a lot in the field of Olympic and amateur sports. Uh, previously was with the U.S. Olympic Committee out in Colorado Springs. And before that, I headed up the sponsorship of Sarah Lee Corporation, which was mainly known by its champion and Haynes brands for the Atlanta Olympic Games. And um, so I've had a lot of time in the Olympic world, and I really enjoy that. I enjoy supporting Olympic and amateur sports, and so our company has concentrated in that area. And you have a... New news regarding the AAU, right? Yeah, we just finished assisting the city of Greensboro with hosting the AAU Junior Olympic Games. It was the first time that event had ever been in uh, the city of Greensboro, uh, and it had over 14,000 athletes participating in it. So I think it ranks right up there as possibly the very largest uh, athlete event has ever been in the state. Wow. Uh, it went very well. It was about a 10-day event. It just wrapped up this weekend, and I think they were very pleased with it, and they're planning on coming back uh, in a few years. Oh, congratulations on that. Congratulations. Hey, what are your thoughts? I think we can now talk more freely about uh, the deal that saw Legion Airlines put its name on what it was now previously called Las Vegas Stadium for an estimated, well, as I understand, really $400 million. Yeah, it's well, you know, with that stadium under construction and the one in Los Angeles that's going to be the home of the Rams and the Chargers, you know, those are the two largest uh, um, stadium construction projects underway right now. So it certainly uh, was, I think, positioned perfectly to have a very significant naming rights. I mean, fortunately, we're in a good time. Uh, we've distanced ourselves from the Great Recession, where naming rights pretty much dried up completely. And um, uh, the sports construction industry, in terms of new facilities, is actually uh, continuing to escalate. And so it's looking very positive. The country's economy is doing well right now. So all those factors kind of come together. Uh, and they're in very, very attractive markets, of course, Los Angeles, huge market, um, and also Las Vegas, a new exciting market. So I think all those factors have come together to lend themselves to the new naming rights for the Raiders. Obviously, L.A. is still looking for one, but uh, you could tell they were going to be big, uh, I think, for those two new states, especially the price tag on them, uh, $1.9 billion. Yeah. And two billion some plus, uh, respectively. Hey, so take us behind the scenes. How do you, yeah, how do you pitch a deal like that to? How do you find an airline that's that's receptive to hearing you? How does that happen? Well, um, if you look at 
Um, now, our company, uh, we do naming rights across a wide spectrum of um, uh, facilities. We've even done fairgrounds and piers. We've uh, done <laughs> performing arts centers as well as uh, collegiate and other sports facility related projects. Uh, even we haven't done a NFL stadium, and uh, although we've done work previously with the Carolina Panthers and all, but we've been, uh, no matter what level you are on naming rights, typically the defining factor of the best targets to be your naming rights sponsor are going to be hometown headquartered companies or uh, maybe the next tier is companies that have a major presence in your market. The, right behind that might be companies that want are kind of newly in the market that want to build a big name for themselves. Um, so all those factors are kind of the key factors to it. It would be very rare for a company from far away that only had a modest connection to a market where a venue is located to take on uh, a significant naming rights. Um, that would be very unusual. So you start the chase by looking at who's uh, headquartered and has a uh, significant company, if you want a particularly large naming rights, uh, in your local market. And then your next tier would be companies that have a major presence there, might not have their headquarters there, et cetera. Also with the teams, you know, their first choice on naming rights ought to be somebody who already has a relationship with the team because they've worked uh, very diligently, obviously, to build a relationship with somebody who's a sponsor in some other capacity. Hmm. And in Las Vegas with the Oakland Raiders, they already had a relationship with a legion. So that's a really good, you know, it's much harder to open a new door than it is to take an existing relationship and maybe build on it. So I think, um, you know, certainly that, that was a significant factor in leading Allegiant to be a naming rights sponsor there. Hey, what, what about the factor of Jerry Jones? And I, I hate to put your competitor out there in a sense, but Legends Hospitality, because uh, I had the accidental pleasure of being in a Raiders sponsor party at CES Las Vegas. How I got there is a, is a comedy in and of itself, but... Uh, Jerry Jones ruled the roost, and I, I know Jerry. Uh, and he said, among other things, that you have to act like you've got two dollars in your pocket and the rent is due. And this guy's a billionaire, but you know, is it that kind of rollicking personality that takes you, you know, to get to the finish line? I mean, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is this all about? Now, I um, and I've worked with uh, Jerry Jones, one of one of his companies, CSL which does a lot of facility analysis and work. Uh, we've retained them here in our local market even to uh, assist us. We're working with the local professional soccer team on the possibility of expanding their uh, facilities and things along those lines. So they have a very, very good company, uh, Legends, and obviously they've gone up to a whole new tier, if you will, with not only uh, handling the uh, hospitality and VIP entertainment, entertainment like they do at a number of venues, but also the naming rights and major sponsorship work they're doing. They've been named the uh, sponsorship agency for the Los Angeles Olympic Games for 2028. Mm. And they're talking like a combined TV and sponsorship package of possibly over 400 million per sponsorship for that. Um, obviously, you get all the time from now until 2028 if you sign on, but that just shows you kind of the level that the Legends Group is operating at is very, very significant. Uh, and why, um, you know, having a Jerry Jones associated with your organization and having people operating kind of on that tier uh, becomes very important for the level of sponsorships that uh, an Oakland team would want for its new venue is because of the relationships they have. Um, you know, if it's a salesperson way down in the organization trying to open the door of the CEO of a major corporation, that's really pretty challenging. But if it's Jerry Jones maybe uh, making a call and opening the door to start the initial conversations, um, you've gone a long way right there towards possibly creating a partnership. So uh, that's very significant to have, you know, a company under 
somebody like his wing and uh, and uh, uh, no doubt uh, very significant relationships he's got at the very highest levels of many companies uh, to assist with that process. What kind of benefit does Allegiant Airlines get from having its name on Las Vegas Stadium? It's a, I know it's a dumb question, but it's one to be asked. <laughs> Well, you know, when, if a company is, I'll, I'll get into the weeds just a little bit, and then yeah, I'm going to answer that on a thirty thousand foot level. But <laughs> literally, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. The, um, <laughs> but uh, if you get in the weeds, you get in the weeds a little bit. You, um, you know, if a company's doing its due diligence, and at this level, certainly they have their agencies all working on it, and uh, you know, they're always uh, taking a pencil to it and seeing if it really. Uh, pencils out the way they want. And by that, I mean, they're looking at uh, a couple of different ways of analyzing it. Uh, number one is a kind of a comparative analysis. What are new venues at the highest level of professional sports in the United States, or maybe even in other countries of the world, um, if you consider some of the top soccer teams as well, um, getting, uh, you know, very much like trying to figure out the uh, how much your house is worth by conference comparable market analysis of other properties that might be nearby that have sold recently. So there's that part that enters in. When we do an analysis, that's part of it and a very important part. Uh, secondly, they're going to look at it from an advertiser's perspective. What kind of value is associated with the type of impressions that are created out in the marketplace, the type of exposure? You know, uh, if you were to buy an ad, on your local TV uh, station, a 30 second ad, they'd be telling you, okay, you're gonna reach an audience of X, you know, we value that at Y, and therefore that's why we're gonna uh, bill you for this amount, because we see that as the value of this imp these impressions you're gonna get. The uh, naming rights sponsors or prospects analyze it the same way. They're looking at the type of exposure uh, they might get. Uh, and then beyond that, there's some intangibles. You know, hey, we're a growing company. If we put our name on something way bigger than anybody thought we could, perhaps that will make everybody think we're way bigger and will certainly give us brand recognition that's out there that we might not have been able to get any other way at this level. And uh, that will help uh, build awareness for our company and people thinking, hey, Allegiant Airlines, uh, I hadn't really heard of them until they took the stadium naming rights, and uh, we ought to look into them as a possibility for our next trip. So uh, that's all a factor, and they, uh, we also add a demographic analysis where we're looking at different markets and how they compare. So, you know, if you were, uh, we've actually done naming rights associated with a facility in one of the poorest counties in North Carolina previously, and uh, while that won't prevent naming rights, uh, we say that that kind of takes the needle down somewhat. You know, it makes it more challenging because the wherewithal of corporations and others in uh, that type of territory is not there. But in a market like a Las Vegas or a Los Angeles, which are top tier markets all the way around, you know, then the needle moves the other way and um, the value of the sponsorship actually goes up. And if you look uh, around the country at the top tier of naming rights that are out there, you know, what's happening in San Francisco with the new arena, mm -hmm. uh, Giant Stadium and uh, MetLife Stadium in uh, the New York area and everything, um, the highest premiums, if you will, paid for naming rights go to those largest markets. And typically the NFL stadiums are at the highest level because that's uh, kind of the top tier of our professional sports in the United States. Then come arenas and baseball stadiums, and then it goes on down. You know, uh, uh, naming rights are really a relatively new phenomenon in the big picture of the world. I mean, it seems like a long time now when we say 1972, but uh, Buffalo Stadium, Rich Stadium, was actually the first naming rights sponsorship of a venue in the United States. Um, and, you know, from that point on, uh, and especially in the last, let's say, three decades, it's really progressed pretty dramatically. And I think for um, teams, franchises, stadiums, and then those of us who are in kind of the sponsorship side of the industry, it's actually really 
good that it's come on strong since the recession when it went completely off the grid. And um, so it's actually encouraging that some of these new properties are getting large investments by these companies because it means they still see a great deal of value in it. And um, that actually has a trickle down effect for everybody doing sponsorships all across the board, even if it's just for an event or a small thing in your hometown. Uh, it shows that there is a value to sponsorships, that corporations see a value to it. Naming rights are right up at the top of the heap, but then it, it shows across the board that the sponsorship industry is still growing strong. Hey, curious, what does it say about the idea that Las Vegas is the 42nd largest media market and therefore uh, some thought, not me, that they couldn't, I mean, I was skeptical, admittedly, whether or not they could fetch a huge deal. I knew they needed like 600 million. And when Caesars first got involved, I thought, hey, they got it, they got it, they got it. But 400 million ain't bad. But still, does this blow away the idea that media market size matters? Or is it just Las Vegas? I think, I think in that case, it's probably more just Las Vegas. The uh, media market definitely matters. Um, but it matter, you know, uh, we're talking the NFL, mm -hmm. all right? So mm -hmm. they set the standard for everybody in terms of professional sports and the values associated with it. I mean, look at the values of the franchises. I mean, David Tepper, you know, everybody was amazed that the Carolina Panthers would sell for $2 billion. Uh, you can imagine what that means for like a Jerry Jones's Dallas Cowboys <laughs> or whatever. I mean, it's just, it just shows that there is really amazing value there and you know the fact that the Dodgers also sold for that in Los Angeles shows that Los Angeles market has a tremendous value too. So Las Vegas, um, while the media market in Vegas itself is smaller than you know it's not in the top twenty-five in the country, let's say, at the same time it's tied in directly to the NFL's total media package. Now that now that they're the Raiders are coming to the new venue. So I think that has helped overcome the shortfall maybe of the ranking of the media market. And then, like you said, just kind of the Vegas name in one sense probably added a premium to everything. And Vegas is growing. And, um, you know, with the success of the NHL team there, um, there's a lot of excitement that the um, pro football will be equally as good or better. And I think for the airline, actually, it's pretty smart. If if the market overall is not quite as big as some others, um, that gives the airline even more opportunity because people will want to come in. Vegas is such a destination. Who wouldn't maybe want to come in for a long weekend, go to uh, their favorite casino, and go be able to take in an F NFL game at the same time? I mean, that's that, that's a great airlines package for uh, Allegiant to bring people into town. Hey, just so I, I think it is probably a winning combination. And, um, you know, the, the, the air transport into uh, Las Vegas has continued to grow kind of exponentially <laughs> as well. So it's a good move I think, by an airline that's kind of up and coming. Hey, uh, they also get a bonus because at some point they're going to get a Super Bowl game. I mean, they should have gotten one by now, but that's another story. A long story at that, but what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's right. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, the Super Bowl is the pinnacle, right? Mm -hmm. So um, yes, that will add in. There, there's a bowl. They already have committed to a bowl game to be hosted in the new stadium, uh, and there'll be additional events too. Um, you know, back here in the Carolinas. Um, since David Tepper bought the Panthers, he's already signed deals for international soccer matches to be held in the stadium, uh, concerts. Um, so I think the new wave, uh, and, you know, an NFL stadium, I think nowadays won't just sit there for 10 <laughs> to a dozen football games a year. It's going to be a venue that people want to do more things in, the ownership that is. And um, so... Um, the airlines is going to get all the extra. Look at um, my sister-in-law works for the Miami Dolphins. Ah. And uh, look at all they've done with, um, you know, they put, <laughs> they put Key Biscayne's tennis courts out in their parking lot and the main court in their stadium. 
you know, for that famous tennis tournament, um, he's always doing major concerts, international uh, soccer events uh, in that stadium. That's the wave I think you're going to see with all these new properties. You, you kind of can't afford not to do all that. If you're going to invest uh, almost $2 billion in your stadium, you want to make sure that it's a very active place. And I think Allegiant is really going to benefit from that. Hey, real quick. Um out of respect for your time, because I, th I was think maybe uh, another ten minutes. Is that okay? Uh, uh, your call. I mean, I'm, I'm loving this. This is fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is this is outstanding. Uh, I want your thoughts. Yeah, I'm loving it too. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Because uh, what are your thoughts about the question? A lot of my viewers ask me: Could the same level of deal be gotten in Oakland if the Raiders had stayed in Oakland? I actually think that would have been challenging. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Oakland, um, not just the football stadium, but the baseball stadium has, um, you know, been cha a challenging issue around Oakland, you know, to get a new stadium for the baseball as well as uh, football, obviously, all these years. And um, there's always kind of the competition with the rest of the Bay market. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, the 49ers in Santa Clara and, um, you know, now the Bass NBA in near downtown and the baseball team uh, right on the waterfront there. So um, I think that's part of the challenge for an Oakland in that market. I mean, it's, it's one of the nation's premier markets, no doubt about it, the whole Bay Area and population-wise and media market-wise and just attractiveness in general. It's a fantastic destination. But, you know, Las Vegas, uh, is, they'll be the big kid on the block. They won't have to compete. You know, there's the hockey team, mm. okay? You got that. Oh. Um, but that's only other competition they have in the local market at the pro level. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's collegiate uh, teams there, but um, I think that, that has helped um, maybe position them to better to be able to get a larger investment from companies. Hey, having said that, the fact that Caesars and others have already on board as sure, yeah, yeah. How having said that, how do you? Uh, that's, what, what, that's helpful as well. Yeah. What do you think of? Uh, Rick Welts explained, who was the president of the Warriors, explained that they secured $2 billion. I'm sorry, Hill. When I hear that, I'm like, I still, every time I hear that, I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. $2 billion for the Warriors Chase Arena. I mean, they've got Chase, United Airlines. I mean, is that the new gold standard or what? And it's in the Bay Area, right? Yeah. I think, um, well, what you have there, I think, is the fact that they're going to be in San Francisco. They're going to be in a totally, you know, fantastically redeveloping area of downtown, if you will, or extension of downtown, mm -hmm. however you want to look at that. And, um, you know, the team has been uh, a successful team. Yeah. Um, so I think that all goes along with it. And they, they're, you know, they're a good organization, too. Uh, if you got a good organization and you're really putting together all the pieces and humping it all the time, so to speak, to pull together all those supporters, and by that I mean the financial supporters uh, who he's got as investors, um, that that's an important part. Also, I think the timing. You know, look how long it's kind of taken that uh, whole uh, project mm -hmm. to finally come to fruition. You know, all the years they had to deal with the city and try to figure out where they would even be allowed to build the arena. Mm -hmm. And then finally they picked a the site and then they could, you know, do all the environmental studies. They had to do. Then they can get going on the construction. It's taken long enough where, and that, and people can see the progress along the way that it's allowed, I think, uh, the plenty of time to work on all those deals that could go into it. Um, one of the, um, you know, one of the things you had asked me about in advance was like the American Airlines deal uh, with the new stadium in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And they were even saying even for that deal, an American is the largest carrier in Los Angeles, has the most market share in building, rebuilding their whole terminal there in L.A. Yet it took over a year of conversations to finally strike a deal to be just the equivalent of kind of like a founding partner for that stadium, much less, you know, what it might take to be a naming right. So they take a lot of, a uh, lot of time. 
And uh, the group in San Francisco has had the benefit, I think, of a lot of time. And that helps uh, there. But they're a very good organization. Actually, I've known Rick Welts since he was uh, in Phoenix. And, um, you know, they're top drawer. And their team has been uh, top performer. So, and being downtown, I think all that has really uh, helped that uh, as well. And, you know, just perception-wise, <laughs> Uh, you know, Oakland may not like this, but I think people perceive San Francisco as a higher tier than their next door neighbor, Oakland. I mean, <laughs> so I think that's part of it, too. Well, hey, since you opened up that door as an Oaklander, I have to ask you, what do you think of the uh, incredible or incredibly designed and will be built new baseball stadium for the A's at Howard Terminal? I mean, it's just a beautiful thing, you know. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it or not, but oh my lord! I, I think it's going to transform Oakland. <laughs> yeah, well, I was excited about that because of all the all the struggles with new, you know getting new stadiums in Oakland that we mentioned a minute ago. I, I thought it was fantastic that they actually could have a new stadium. Yeah. I'd love to see it come about. <laughs> and the A's have kind of a unique history, as we all know. And uh, of way punching above their weight, and when it comes to uh, baseball now, kind of the Rays are, are like the guys who are uh, down in um, St. Pete are really kind of reflecting, you know, that same sort of uh, ability. But uh, the A's, I think, have always um, done that, and they're kind of a favorite. And the Raiders hurt themselves i think when i remember when they moved down to la and they mm -hmm. moved back and so on and so forth and that hurt the fan base uh, i believe and uh whereas at least the a's have been consistent and always being a hometown team uh there they didn't kind of you know cast their uh favorite fans aside and move to another city and then back and all so i think uh that challenged uh oakland raiders in the market as well on that, I mean, how do I ask this question? Have the Raiders hurt themselves in the way they've handled the Las Vegas move? Because uh, there hasn't been a lot of selling to Oakland Raiders fans. There's been a lot of arguing, you know? Uh, what can the Raiders do to really rehabilitate an image that, I mean, look, even, even NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said to me personally that the Raiders deserve some blame for why they didn't have a stadium in Oakland. So there's a lot of, I mean, I can tell you there are NFL staff that were upset. Uh, I don't want to go, you know, uh, give away confidences as much as I'll say. But what do the Raiders do now that it, you know, they're on they're on track and they're headed in the right direction, albeit with fits and starts, in rehabilitating their fan base? What do they do? Well, I think uh, they very much think in terms of starting over, if you will, or starting fresh. Um, you know, they want to, they, they, as much as possible, they want to keep their most hardcore fans if they can. And you don't want to cast them aside. And they've been buffeted around, you know, a lot, I think, over the years uh, from various things the team has done. So I think that they need to, you know, it'd be like a, a person wanting to, you know, kind of, uh, who's maybe had some challenges in their past and they want a fresh start. And they want to, you know, be all the person they can be. It's the same with the team. You want to say, okay, we've stepped on toes. We've made mistakes. We've not uh, done everything the way we should have. Um, but now we have the opportunity for a new lease on life, so to speak. And um, and it's a great opportunity because their facility is going to be fantastic. They're going to be in a hopping destination entertainment market. And uh, I think... You try to keep all the fans that you've had in the past who are your most hardcore fans. Those are always the most important for a team. Try to keep them and then start fresh on getting all the new base they can build up. And not just Las Vegas, but others who would be willing to travel there. I mean, now, uh, if you figure that, um, I mean, let's take the market in our neck of the woods for, for, the, for the Falcons. Typically, an NFL market for a game day might be a three-hour drive. Or, now, a lot of people, if you, with uh, reasonable flights like Allegiant, might say it's a couple-hour flight. And, um, and so uh, people would be willing to come from further away to games. 
And I think the other benefit for Oakland is going to be that visiting teams will also bring significant contingents to the city. Um, you know, we already know some teams that travel really, really, really well. The Green Bay Packers, I put it, you know, at the yeah. top of that. I go to, I go to, I'm a Panthers season ticket holder. I go to a Panthers game playing uh, Green Bay in Charlotte, and I'm going, dang, there's more Green Bay fans here than there are Panther fans. <laughs> and um, and they buy up every hotel room in the city, and so on and so forth. And um, so I think with such an attractive destination. Uh, the Oakland team and the franchise and the stadium are going to benefit from uh, probably a, a higher uptake from visiting fans even that will be coming there. And um, so it's an opportunity potentially to even maybe make some new fans out of people who aren't as wedded to their team allegiances but think, hey, it'd be great to go to uh, Vegas and see Oakland play and then spend time on the strip or whatever. So I think, you know, there's an opportunity for them to start fresh, build an, an additional new fan base, and uh, hopefully work out some of the kinks they've had in the past. And keep in mind that the relationship with their fans is the most important thing of all. And, uh, yes, you may get all these great sponsors, and, yes, you've got a fantastic stadium, but if nobody wants to come see you play and pull for you, uh, you know, you're going to sink <laughs> to the bottom of the heap regardless. Yeah. And, um, you know, and there's, as we know, there's evidence around some of the professional leagues of some owners who kind of, I think, either took things for granted or maybe had an attitude that, uh, you know, we don't need the fans in mm -hmm. a sense or we don't care about treating them fantastic like we should. And uh, their teams have suffered accordingly. Hey, what do you think, uh, shifting gears to your own backyard and a person I have uh, met and actually managed to get the first question out when he was introduced as Carolina Panthers owner, that's Dave Tepper, who uh, uh, I just really adore as a person. And not only that, he's a dancer at the NFL Owners Meeting. He's got us all dancing at the annual meeting. And uh, there's a, that's no small, that's no mean trick, by the way. So uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts about Dave Tepper and uh, the future of the Panthers under his uh, direction? From a marketing standpoint and new standards. Yeah, I haven't met him yet. I hope I, hope I do. Uh, um, uh, first of all, uh, it was exciting to see somebody um, with his um, resources, should we say, uh, take on the Panthers. Because, of course, those of us who are fans were worried, well, you know, the next owner could just move him out of town. And he's been willing to say, keep him there, number one. Number two, he's been willing to put his... I mean, he's gotten a really great partnership out of the, our across the border neighbors in South Carolina with his training camp and their willingness to spend over $100 million on that and uh, and move his headquarters out there. Now, that part I hated. I'm going, <laughs> dang on, you know, because I actually uh, go all the way back. I, I helped the Richardson stage the initial exhibition games to try to uh, show the NFL that the Carolinas had a market ah. for the NFL. So I was involved with Jerry Richardson and Max Melliman and mm -hmm. Jerry's son, Mark, and his other son, John, uh, in their very original efforts to bring – the Panthers to Charlotte and everything, and I've been I've been a PSL holder since the get go with them and with a bunch of friends. And uh, so I did hate that David Debert took the deal from our uh, our former friends across the border in South Carolina and moved the headquarters over there because I'm going Charlotte should be North Carolina should be the headquarters of the Panthers. But, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. We got the stadium there and um, and he's he's going to do more. He's uh, he and he's thinking big. I will say that and he's going. You know, I I think in ten years we ought to have a, a roof on our stadium and we ought to be, have a bid in for the Super Bowl mm -hmm. in Charlotte. Now, you know, I'm all about that North Carolina. I, 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 I really like, you know, our state and the South and everything. I say, yeah. No, Look at the great job Atlanta does on all its fantastic events and the new uh, Mercedes Dome there. It's just such a fantastic facility. We'd love to have that kind of thing come to North Carolina. So he's thinking that way. He's working on the MLS, uh, and uh, I kind of favor our area for that, but, you know, he's got more resources <laughs> than we do. So, uh, uh, he's uh he could take the cake on that one and um but he's 
he's also down to earth, it seems. I mean, I'm only reading about it and watching what he's doing. You've uh, talked about some of the things he's done that show that he's kind of a person of the people. Yeah. Not so much some guy who's got uh, billions of dollars that you might think is going <laughs> to mix with the masses. And uh, so I think that can be very, very appealing to further uh, bolster uh the panthers team and um so he goes out to team functions he meets with the public um and i will say that jerry richardson didn't do that so much particularly towards the end of his time with the panthers and uh, so i think he's starting out in a very good direction um for the city and he's thinking bigger than some of the city guys too which is good because I've often felt that, you know, a lot of things in our home state, some of the provincial people kind of hold us back from things that could be at a whole new level here um, in our state. You may get that uh, in Georgia Oak or Oakland, too, but um, it's, uh, it's the kind of thing where I think he's off to a good start. And uh, as long as he stays on the trajectory he's on right now, I think it's going to mean great things for not just the team, but also for the city of Charlotte and our state, too. Hey, I'm curious to know, uh, just on the subject of media that we kind of touched on, I think, around the edges, uh, does the change in media make it tougher for sports marketers because it seems like market share in media is declining all around you now? I think the New York Times has reported that it has a declining revenue problem. Is that a problem for sports marketers? So in terms that you're saying in terms of like where newspapers and others have gone, oh, declining revenue in terms of media oh, I should, or I should, uh, teams I, and everything. I, well, not so much declining revenue. I, I apologize. Oh. I should be, I mean, declining eyeballs. You know, you, you can't, like one of my friends who's a big PR guy in San Francisco was saying that it's harder to get the eyeballs where you need them to go, you know? And uh, I was curious in listening to you yeah. if that yeah. was, you know, a problem. Well, I agree. I agree with that. That um, um, in in one sector that we work as a business in called sports tourism, mm-hmm. uh, I actually founded the national trade group. That's our. It's called and now it's called uh, Sports and Entertainment uh, Travel Association. But it, up until last year, it was called the National Association of Sports Commissions. And literally, when we started that group back at the start of the 90s Mm -hmm. i mean literally there was like a handful of us and now there's over a thousand cities in the u.s that are that participate in our that's where i know your name and everything that's where i know your name (laughs) and that's reflective of you know exactly what you're talking about with media that and it's all because sports has grown as a marketplace, all right? And so there is more competition for eyeballs. Um, and, you know, um, some sports have had to downsize their facilities, NASCAR being one, mm. where, uh, you know, they're not getting the audiences they once had, once had because there's a lot of competition for entertainment, uh, people to enjoy their sport. There are lots of other sport options. Um, there's a lot more things occupying our time for some reason these days, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yes, I think that is a constant battle and that's not going to get any better. That's going to be one on the, you know, the marketplace is going to continue to divide as it grows and people are going to have to say, okay, we're going to have to fight for every eyeball we can, (laughs) but we know that it's going to be a tough slog, uh, no matter what. And, you know, to tell you the honest truth, that that's, has something to do back, you know, if we don't come full circle to the beginning of the conversation, name right, that is one reason why an Allegiant Airlines would take on a new facility like that in their hometown. They're, they're competing against all those other airlines mm-hmm. trying to get their name out there, trying to show that they've got a great product. And, and um, you know, this is a unique way to kind of uh, jump the line in, in a sense for uh, exposure. And they did a great job with that, too. Hey, I'd like to come back and talk with you more. Stick around, because uh, I'll have some questions for you offline, because I'd like to have you back. 
because I could talk for you for a long, long time. <laughs> All right. Sure. All right. Hey, folks. <laughs> I'll, I'll, that's Hill Carroll.